this is the Harman 32 SBMS that we have been working on for a bit over a year now. There's also a smaller version of it that the uh, Fungineers who make one wheels have been selling for a while. It doesn't have the bottom PCB, so it doesn't have the power switch. But um, we have been getting a lot of feedback from them and working on all of the issues and so on that came up with them. So it has seen, or essentially the same thing has seen quite some use by now. And uh, the sleep cur the sleep power consumption and all of that and switching on and off and so on, that is working really well. And most people can figure out how to configure it. So here is the same thing again with the lid taken off. And you can see that it consists of... Um, switch PCB with all of the MOSFETs, uh, six tall MOSFETs in parallel, 150 volts, and then two back-to-back -back tall MOSFETs for the charger. And we have some shuns, shuns here for current measurement of the charge and discharge path. Um, one thing to keep in mind that is important, and this might be tempting to unplug this one, solder in this PCB and power it, and then plug this one in with powers on the lower PCB, that is not a good idea. You should absolutely make sure that the PCBs are plugged together when they plug in power. So when you receive the BMS, then the first thing you should do is plug in USB. And when you do, it will show up in VestTool as USB32. Then you connect to it. Then you go to the VEST packages page, update the archive. Select the Harmony 32, should be the only one that is visible when it's plugged in. And then do install, and then you get the latest version of the BMS package. And the packages are very easy to update for me. And uh, now as we are shipping these, I'm getting feedback from many users, and I'm trying to make frequent updates to make, make it easy to configure and to address the questions that you usually have. So it's good to start by getting to, to the latest version when you plug it in the first time. Um, also, probably before this, you should have gone to the website and uh, with um, the Vesk Labs website where the Harmony 32 is. And then under downloads, there is the data sheet. And there is a lot of information in the data sheet that you should read carefully. And it also has a lot of example wiring diagrams of how to hook up cells. And uh, we have 13, 16, 18, and a few other different configurations. And there are some things to think about when connecting cells, and that is mainly, I will illustrate it, illustrate that with the 18S diagram here. And try to zoom in a bit so we can see a bit of it here, hopefully. So the BMS has two balance ICs. Uh, channel 1 to 16 go to the first one, and 17 to 32 go to the second one. And you can use only IC1 if you have 16 cells or less, or you can use both ICs if you have more than 16 cells. But it is important that any of the ICs has at least four cells plugged into it, and it should be the starting with the first cell and counting up. And for example, when you have 18 cells, it might be tempting to have 16 on the first one and two on the second one, but that will not work. So in this case, we connect four cells on the second IC and 14 cells on the first one. And uh, that means that we skip the two last cells on the first IC and when you do that, you have to bridge the last cell on the first one to the last cell in use on it, as we have shown here. And uh, that is something to keep in mind if you wire up some number of cells that is not shown in any drawing here. So, um, yeah, so once you have read this and then done the update, you can do the configuration. And I usually do that before I plug in the cells. And then you can you can power it from USB, by the way. I don't know if I said that, so you don't need to have power plugged in to connect to it. And then when you're connected, you go to the VESC BMS page in VESC tool. And the first three tabs are the regular uh, express configurations with CAN bus and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And general is the first one related to the BMS. And the main setting, so also one thing to keep in mind is that all of the voltage limits and so on, they are configured for um, lithium ion cells to charge to 4.2 volts per cell. If you use something like uh, LFP cells, then you have to go over all of the limits and change them to appropriate values for them because they charge to 3.6 volts instead of 4.2, for example. 
But uh, we are assuming that we have a lithium ion pack, and we are assuming that we're having this 18s configuration now that we had in the page. And in that case, we have we have to set the cells in each balance IC, and that is 14 cells on IC1 and four cells on IC2. And then you write the settings down here. It's also possible to use Coulomb counting instead of using the voltage to get the state of charge. And then you have to set the amp hours the battery pack has. I usually set it to 95% or so of the, of the amp hours to really get down to zero when with a conservative estimate. Otherwise, it might show 10% and jump down to zero if you overestimate your amp hours. But probably on uh, lithium iron cells, I would not use Coulomb counting because then the state of charge that is displayed, even if it uh, suffers a bit in the voltage check, it is based on the thing that you can measure right away. So you don't have to worry about having your amp hours off. Uh, another thing to configure here as well is the number of temperature sensors. And uh, if you don't have any temperature sensors plugged in, you have to set this one to zero. Otherwise, it will not charge because when you don't plug them in, it will show very low temperature on the inputs. And that will prevent the charging from starting. And uh, that is also written in the data sheet. And uh, other than that, you also, and looking at all of the limits, you should also look at the power switch settings. And uh, this is for the built-in short circuit protection. And you can set the, the threshold you want to protect that. And if you set it to more than 600 amps, it's likely to fail the switch and it will not protect so much then. Um, I have a video clip here where we did um, yesterday evening where we did uh, 600 amp short circuit protection on my old bike. That was really scary to do, but uh, it did trigger at the at that current and it didn't destroy it. So that is a nice feature to have, but it's a nice to have. And uh, we always should remember that you need to have a fuse as well, because semiconductors can not save you in all situations. For example, if there's moisture coming in and so on. Uh, some other notes about the short circuit protection as well is that uh, it is important that the inductance on the battery side, like this cable here and this cable here, and all of the combined cables in this loop is as low as possible. The more inductance you have on the primary side where the cells are, the less likely the short circuit protection is to survive because um, it turns out that it's quite tricky to switch off a MOSFET in series and not have the MOSFET die because all of the current and inductance will store some energy in this loop and that will keep pushing energy into the MOSFETs and the BMS until the current decays, and that can easily break them. And we have done some tricks on it to make it as robust as possible to that, but the best thing you can do is <clears throat> minimize this inductance. And also keep in mind, if you go close to the max voltage, so for example, if you have 32 cells, I don't know how much current you can rely on, maybe not even more than 100 or 200 amps because it will well you're just much closer to the rating of the MOSFETs then so the lower voltage you have the more current the short circuit protection can take but again don't rely on the short circuit protection you should really have the appropriate fuses in your system um, so when you have configured the BMS like this then you can plug in your battery and uh, what I do usually is I put the connector on the plus and minus here and then I plug in that connector. You should ideally plug in plus and minus first and then you plug in the balance leads. And when you do that, you have uh, two minutes to plug them in because if you are slower than two minutes after you power it up, it will try to initialize the balance ICs and that can put the second IC in a state where it's unable to read the cells for TI hardware reasons. And in that, if that happens, you have to unplug everything and plug it in again. And uh, another thing to note that is important to keep in mind the BMS, I will uh, replug it here now. Then we can show this two minute timer as well. Is that when you're connected and you pull BMS data and go to the BMS page, and you have this in the mobile vessel too, 
at the bottom here you have the st status line of the BMS and it will show what is going on. And now it's showing waiting and a counter and this is the countdown on the first plugin that it will use before it tries to initialize things. And it will also show you here when it's charging or when it's when the power switch is on or when the power switch is off. It will also show fault codes here or when it's pre-charging. So if something is acting strange and it's not working as it should, then connect and have a look at this line. I can also demo that quickly on the bike that I have behind me there. Um, it has a 22S battery with one of these BMSs. And um, then when now that the BMS is plugged in, you can see all of the 22 cells here. And you can also see the temperatures of the temperature sensors. And you can see the humidity. It also has a humidity sensor that I probably forgot to mention. And here you can see the status right now is power switch on. Now we'll go to the bike and switch off the key switch. And now it sets power switch off. And when I switch it on again, we'll see it starts with pre-charge and then it goes on. And if the pre-charge timeouts, for example, then it will get the pre-charge fault here. So um, again, that is a useful thing to look at. So I think that's uh, a basic configuration guide. And um, I will try to put up more videos like this one as questions arise when we sell these. So I hope you like the BMS. And it is available on our website right now. We have uh, a few of them in stock. So if you want one and you buy one now, it should arrive in less than a week, hopefully. <laughs>